Hey y'all, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, I am both an indie author and a bookish content creator and I am so glad you're here. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my summer TBR. I'm usually a pretty good TBR maker and keeper. Um, things will swap in and out, but this is generally the basis of what I would like to read this summer. But y'all, so I've been reading a lot of romance lately in the spring, and obviously I wrote my romance this spring. It is releasing July 23rd. I'll link it down below, but I'm on to my like summer of fantasy. So I think every book that I have here, yes, is a fantasy book. So we've got a lot of fantasy romance because uh, that's just sort of what I'm into, but also some high fantasy as well. Um, so let's get started. First one on my list is a reread and that is because I'm prepping to read Kingdom of Ash. I read the entirety of the Throne of Glass series except for Kingdom of Ash like four years ago and now I'm trying to reread them so I know what's happening. I got the new covers for all of them. So the next one I need to read is Tower of Dawn. Again, this is a reread. This is my second favorite in the series behind Queen of Shadows, which is top tier. Um, but Tower of Dawn is my second favorite. I am a Kale stan. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I'm excited to reread this, um, especially after, you know, the cliffhanger that we get in Empire of Storms. Um, but this one's really fun. I love the cover and I can't wait to get to Kingdom of Ash. So I've got two books that I've already started. I'm about 70 pages into both of them. I think the first one is How Does It Feel, which is the first book in the Infatuated Fae series um, by Janine O'Reilly. This book, the tagline says, A Forbidden Obsession, Unyielding Family Allegiances, and Three Deadly Challenges. So I'm 70% in and I just sort of got to the fantasy aspect, if you will. Um, it's about a biologist named Callie Peterson, and she's trying to find a specific mushroom that's going to help her sort of like propagate these butterflies that are moths that she's been looking for as a biologist. And it takes her to a fairy portal with a fae prince who is apparently um, not very nice. Um, so I think it's an enemies to lovers sort of situation. 70 pages in, she just fell through the portal. So I need to get going on this one. I read the first 70 pages in like an hour. <laughs> so I need to keep going with this one, but I had other stuff I need to finish first. Um, next one, another one that I've started already is this Woven Kingdom. So it's a little shiny, hard to see. Um, but this Woven Kingdom is by Tahiri Mafi and it is a YA fantasy and it is, let me see. Yes, clashing empires, forbidden romance, and a long forgotten queen who must claw her way through darkness to reclaim her throne. Um, I started this one like two months ago and then I ran out of Spotify hours. And it is about a girl who um, essentially acts as a servant, but she's actually the long lost heir to an ancient Jinn kingdom. Um, so I am super excited to see where this goes. I listened to the first, oh, 96 pages. I listened to the first 96 pages. I was hooked. I was hooked. Um, but then I had another audiobook to finish. So I'm going to get back on that train, this Woven Kingdom. Super, super good. Okay. So the next one, she's a mass market paperback, which I actually love. <laughs> I love these little guys. I'm taking this to the beach and this is a Game of Thrones, which is the first book in the, um, what is it called? A Song of Ice and Fire. I always forget what it's called. Um, by George R.R. R. Martin. Um, obviously y'all probably all know what a Game of Thrones is. It says, in a land where summers can last decades and winters a lifetime, trouble is brewing. The cold is returning and in the frozen waste in, to the north of Winterfell, sinister and supernatural forces are massing beyond the kingdom's protective wall. Um, at the center of the conflict lies the Starks of Winterfell, a family as harsh and unyielding as the land they were born to. So this is a lot of like family house politicking. Um, I'm intrigued to see how it sort of like matches up with the show. I love the show. I love all the seasons of the show, um, <laughs> which I know is an unpopular opinion, but um, I'm excited to read that at the beach. Okay, so next one up, I feel like I had this like five years ago. I'm trying to think when it came out. It came out in 2018. So I had this probably five or six years ago and I just thought it wasn't up my alley because I heard it was like bully romance, not quite enemies to lovers, but it was really harsh. And I'm not a harsh gal. Um, 
But my friend Amanda said, girl, you need to try this. So it's the Curl Prince. <laughs> I know I'm like the last person on this train, but there are like five or six books in this series and continuation. Y'all know I love a long series. So um, tagline is sharpen your blade, harden your heart. It says Jude was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of of fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there, but many of the fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest son of the High Prince. To win a place at the court, Jude must defy him and face the consequences. So obviously it's called the Cool Prince. He's not going to be a nice person, but I need to just like get over that and <laughs> read this book. So the Cool Prince, I'm going to buddy read this with my friend Brie and yeah, why fantasy. Looks good. Okay, I actually have one more reread that I totally forgot about, but our fantasy book club, um, DM me on Instagram if you want to join, our fantasy book club is reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. So there's this one, there's Ashes and Star Cruise King, there is Six Scorch Roses, which is a standalone novella in the same world, there is Slaying the Vampire Conqueror, which is another standalone novella within this world, and then the next one, the third one, which is like a new couple, um, is coming out later, I think this fall. So I'm excited to reread this one. This is one of my favorite books of all time, like top 10 books of all time. And I'm happy to reread it with our book club. It is Vampires, which I'm obsessed with. I finally got my hands on a copy of this, like physical copy. Okay, and then this last one is not a reread. My favorite series of all time is Crescent City. I have not read the third Crescent City. So um, yes. I've been very busy. I work three jobs, maybe four, depending on how you classify them. I am, I'm an entrepreneur outside of my day job. Um, and I have not read this because I haven't had time. I don't want to read it like five pages at a time. I can't do that y'all. And I can't read in bed because I fall asleep within three minutes and I don't really read any other time than the morning before I go to work and a lot of times that's on my Kindle. So um, I just I haven't had time for this chunky, chunky book and I want to like actually dedicate time to it. So this summer, hopefully either when I'm at the beach or when I am at the lake for 4th of July, I will be able to get to this one. Um, the end paper artwork is gorgeous. I can't really say probably too much about this other than it is an urban fantasy um, written by Sarah J. Mass, and otherwise, anything else about this book will spoil it, but um, it has a main character named Bryce, and she's pretty awesome. So again, this is House of Flame and Shadow, third book in the Crescent City series. That's my last book on my summer TBR of things that I'm definitely going to get to. So if you have made it to the end of this, make sure you please send me a comment down below telling me what's on your summer TBR. Give this video a like. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.